Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow in his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through the same, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. But filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, Stephen said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears, and with a loud shout, all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city <clears throat> and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs> the hymn is hymn 487, Come my way, my truth, my life. The Lord be with you. And also with you. 
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to my Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, The one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. The... um, gospel that's before us from John is very often used at funerals, and so I uh, found it a little bit difficult. I didn't really want to, to, to go there. So I'm going to take us on a uh, little bit of a different t- track on understanding and reviewing uh, the gospel that's before us. When I was thinking about the gospel, and when we understand it in its context, uh, and, and we find that Jesus has been with the disciples on a three-year journey, and they are coming to the end, and this is part of his farewell discourse in John. And if we were to read, read a little bit before that, Jesus talks about going to the cross, but they don't really understand that he's going to the cross. And Peter, of course, says, because uh, Jesus says, I, you can't go where I'm going, and Peter says, yes, I can. Yes, I can, and Peter gets rebuked by Jesus, who says, Tonight you will deny me three times. Peter, Thomas, they're understanding that they are on a journey. They've been walking with Jesus a long time. What does it mean that he's going to leave them now? So it puts me to thinking about journeys and trips. And two come to mind. Um, both from my childhood, and one is sort of a general one, and you may, uh, a certain generation will probably connect with it. But when I was a child, uh, right in December, um, whether we wanted to go or not, we had to go on a trip. Our house was in Medford, and we would go into Pensauken. And um, I had an aunt, and two aunts, Aunt Mary and Aunt Sophie. And we would go, usually on a Friday night in December, to pick them up. They didn't drive. This is my same Aunt Mary who got kicked out of um, Anglican schools for piercing girls' ears with an ice pick in the basement. So, you know, she was a little bit of a character. But, you know, she was old. And as a little kid, she's like, oh. But she was a kick. But we would have to make this trip. We would go and pick up my Aunt Mary and Aunt Sophie, and we would drive around, seemingly not going where we were going, because there wasn't a point to the trip. It was basically to go see Christmas lights. And then Aunt Mary and Aunt Sophie would, you know, slip you a quarter when 
they got out of the car and were going into the house. So I guess that was your reward for putting up with going on the journey to see Christmas lights. But they were wonderful, but just one thing, Chip, that I remember. Seemingly without point, at least to a child's mind, but for Aunt Mary and Sophie, it was a highlight of their year making that trip. And then I think about when I was a child, some of you may have had the same experience. We weren't really allowed to play with other kids on Sunday. Sunday was very often for my mother and father, you went for a Sunday afternoon trip. You all piled into the car and you got in the car with mom and dad and you went. You didn't know where you were going and uh, more than once my dad would use this as an opportunity to go exploring. Uh, you would just drive around and mom would say, why are you turning here? And dad would say, just because, or I want to go down this way, I want to find something, I want to see something. So you dutifully get in the car and spend your Sunday afternoon traveling around, not quite knowing where you were going. But patiently and enduring, sometimes it led to being lost. And then on a good day, it led to Savages. Savages was a, a dairy farm between Medford and Marlton. And um, they had a little mini golf place there and, and ice cream. So on a good day, the trip would end with ice cream at Savages. Jesus is talking to the disciples about a new part of the trip. And he says that he's going and he'll come back. And that they would know where they're going. And Thomas, of course, says, no, we don't. We don't know where you're going, so how are we going to know the way to get there? And Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. In many ways, it's a reminder that our spiritual life is a journey. And in some ways, uh, when we think about this journey, it's maybe good to think about our baptism is like getting our driver's permit. And uh, we're in this life, in that process of uh, Jesus as the driving instructor on a good day and uh, asking us to listen and to follow direction and to make the trip with him. It's like being with your parents when they took you out driving or any of those adventures. And we are reminded that we, like my father, didn't always, don't always know the way. But we can trust that we're not driving the car alone. We're not five-year-olds with no permit and can't even reach the pedals. But we, by our baptism, have our permit, and we are asked by Jesus to join in the travel. And to trust that Jesus, as the driving instructor of our lives, won't let us get lost. If we just trust trust that he knows the way and if we follow him we will find the way and we will find the truth and we will find light. So as we hear these words today we are reminded to pray that we may be willing to follow Jesus in the journey of our lives. To trust. To trust that he will not let us get lost. We might take a long, long turn once in a while, but if we, in those moments, turn back to the driver and say, where do I go from here? He'll get us back on the right road. And we'll get to the ice cream place. We'll get to the end of the journey. We may even get a quarter in our pocket. If we just are willing to sit to follow, to drive along with Jesus. And as we as a society face the days that are ahead, it should be our prayer 
that we may patiently as a people listen for the direction of God so that we don't get lost. We don't follow the wrong turn, find ourselves going around and around in circle after circle, but that we might find the grace to hear the voice, to follow the directions, and to find our way safely to journey's end. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. service will continue with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In joy and hope, let us pray to the source of all life, saying, Hear us, Lord of glory, that our risen Savior may fill us with the joy of his holy and life-giving resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory, that isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the Easter gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. That he may grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That he may provide for those who lack food, work, or shelter. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That by his power war and famine may cease through all the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. That he may reveal the light of his presence to the sick, the weak, and the dying. That they may be comforted and strengthened. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us that he may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon his people, that we may be a faithful witness to his resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. Let us pray for our own needs and the needs of others. For Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our private, for William, our diocesan bishop, for our companion diocese of Ecuador, Central, and Ecuador, which are all the province of Jerusalem in the Middle East, and the diocese on the Anglican cycle of prayer this week. We pray for Doug and all those in the vocational process, for our neighboring congregations, for the Sisters of St. Mary. We pray for the nation. We pray for peaceful, calm dialogue. For Donald, our president, Michael, our vice president, for members of Congress, for those serving in the judiciary, for Philip, our governor, for all governors and local officials, for the leaders of the nations, those working for peace and nuclear disarmament through the United Nations, for the safety and well-being of all men and women serving in the armed forces and the diplomatic service at home and abroad, and for their families who watch and wait for their safe return, for those who are homeless, hungry, and destitute at this time, for the many who are unemployed, and for those working to relieve their needs and suffering. We pray for those facing immigration and unemployment issues across the globe, for all essential workers, for those we encounter, and for those working behind the scenes. We pray for all hospital staff and medical personnel, for first responders, medical researchers, and those caring for the sick and searching for a cure, for those who are isolated or quarantined because of COVID-19, for those who are displaced or affected in any way by other disasters, 
and whose lives are forgotten as we focus on disease. We pray for those celebrating birthdays. We pray for Janet McSloy, Jerry Miller, Deacon Tricia, Jennifer Tibbet, Nicole Fisher, Aaron Hansel, Brianna Winters, Dorothy Rittenberry, Zachary Simpson, Jeffrey Pownall, and Kylie Hutchinson. We pray for Charlotte Mary, who was born on April 29th, for all those on our parish prayer list and the prayer list of the Daughters of the King, remembering those with coronavirus, remembering Jack, Drew, Sherry, Louise, Al, Jordana, Leslie, Marlena, Melissa, David, Bridget, Joe, Paloma, Allie, Adam, Gary, Sharon, Ann, Carol, Reggie, Rose, Deb, Rob, Lynn, Millie, Norma, Kathleen, and Charles. We pray for those who mourn and grieve, for those on the hearts and minds of our greetings guests. We pray for the departed, remembering especially James Leroy Saunders, priest, Elsie Sutton, Helen Smith, Dr. Charles Close, Mary Pat Corliss, Rocco Scarlato, Mickey, Trudy Crozier, John. We pray for those who have died from coronavirus and for their families who mourn and grieve. For Elizabeth Rogers, for whom the Paschal Candle is given this year. For Robert and Loretta Pownall, Robert Pownall III, Homer Jones, for whom sanctuary candles are given at this time. We pray this day for Winnie Barker, who died on May 7th, 1915, on the sinking of the Lusitania, for Lillian Gething, the first soul baptized in this parish in 1894. We pray for all our departed loved ones, remembering especially all the women who have touched our lives, for mothers and grandmothers, teachers, spouses, and mentors. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who says the solidarity of families, we commend to your continual care the homes in which your people dwell. Put far from them, we beseech you, every root of bitterness, the desire of vain glory, and the pride of life. Fill them with faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness. Knit together in constant affection those who are joined in holy wedlock and made one flesh. Turn the hearts of parents to their children and the hearts of children to their parents. And so enkindle fervent charity among us all that we may evermore be kindly affectioned one to another. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Uh, our announcement today is a happy Mother's Day for all those for whom it applies. We ask that today you would remember all the women who have nurtured you and um, maybe give them a call or prayer or a silent thought. Um, we would remind you that on Memorial Day we will be having the Requiem. Uh, it will be uh, broadcast and available for you. We will be using the list from past years um, at that service. And Pentecost is coming. So please remember, even if you're stuck home, you can still wear red. Offer to God the sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vow to the Most High in 178.
today is offered with thanksgiving for all the women who have been our mothers, our grandmothers, who have touched and formed us and continue to do so on this side of the veil and the other. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O oh Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O oh Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit in the fullness of time. Put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, James, Matthias, Helena, Monica, Margaret of Scotland, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Let us pray. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving as I proclaim your resurrection. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace. Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life 
and in the life to come. Amen. The gift of God for the people. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. May the God of peace who brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.